Well, typically in journalism, we don't usually interview our friends. Um, but today, I'm interviewing my friend, Diane McDaniel, and I know her husband as well. As also, he's a friend of mine, too. I worked with Diane's husband for five years on staff at Eastside Baptist Church. And I spent, I would say those were the best years of my, of my ministry time, Diane, getting to know you and Tim before you had kids, and now you have three of them. And today, we're talking about a pretty serious topic, talking about mental illness and specifically bipolar disorder. And Diane has decided and agreed to share her story with me. How are you doing, Diane? I'm doing great, Mina. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, I, I got to start off with, how did you get to the point of knowing that, hey, you have this mental illness at the same time in the process you know, as, as a friend of yours, I didn't know until three years in on this process, but there were six hospital stays. There were also two res res residential treatment stays as well. Can you walk us through that journey? Sure. Um, hospital stays are, once hospital, uh, I became symptomatic to the point that I needed to be inpatient. Do you remember that first visit, Diane, when you I go? I do remember. Man, I remember it very clearly, and I was not wanting to go, and my doctor had basically mm. said that I had reached a place that I needed further intervention. I needed more structure than what outpatient and what my home environment could provide. That's a real first step, yes. isn't it, to, to go, hey, you're thinking at this point in time, you're coping with it, as they right. say in the, in the counseling world, I guess, and you're at the point of going, the doctor's at the point of going, no, this is pretty serious. And then on top of that, there would be five other stays, Diane. Yes. And then two residential stays as, as well. How did you get through it? How did the family get through it? What was that season like? It was a tough season. It was just, there was, nothing was working, Mina. Nothing mm. was providing me the stability that I needed to function on the outside. I had lost all hope all desire to even want to try and continue down wow. this path. I did not want treatment. I didn't want, nothing was working. Wow. And so I was in and out of hospitals. I was um, going to tr residential treatment centers. It was very, very, very difficult. In the beginning too, I wasn't telling anybody. I didn't let yeah. anybody in on the fact that all this was going on in my life, in my personal life, and I wouldn't let my husband share what was going on either. With the church either. Now, when right. does all this break loose when it is, okay, you came to find out I have bipolar disorder. When did you come to find that out, Diane? When did I come to find it out? Um, I found out that I had bipolar disorder after the birth of my third son. Um, oh. And yeah, he, I, my body just reacted like it, it wouldn't was allow no you to longer, cope any longer with right, it. It was, hey, right. this is it, real. It finally just came to a head. It's like, I cannot pretend that I have it together any, any longer. I don't. I don't have it together. And mm. so I ended up going into the psychiatrist's office getting my diagnosis. And a year later, maybe a year and a half later, I ended up in the hospital, inpatient, dealing with symptoms and medication side effects and just everything that goes along with dealing with mental illness. And when you're initially diagnosed, it takes a while for your treatment to take effect. Yeah. I, ha I took me four years to get on a medication mix that worked for my moods, to wow. stabilize my moods. So. And you've been on quite a journey, yes. Diane, th th through this. And you talk about it in Journals from a Broken Mind in your, in your new book. Yes. And what I love about this is that you walk us through it. Was this freeing to, to Absolutely, to write? Lana. It was, it was so cathartic. It was yeah. so cathartic that I was able to put my journey in together in book form. And now one day, maybe one person will be helped from yeah. my journey. Well, I think many more are going to be helped, I Diane. So. I, I got to tell you, I'm excited about our conversation today because we're going to be on the journey here for the next few minutes and asking, I'm going to be asking you questions about, hey, tell us about your journey. And what I love about the book is, once again, that you lay it all out there. I'll probably say it again in our conversation because it is one of those books I would recommend anyone to get 
for their pastor, for their ministers on this Pastor Appreciation Month that we're in. So let's get started with some more questions. You okay with that? All right. Okay, here we go. When you figured out what was going on, what did you think? I mean, I know your husband's him, so he's a great man. Um, how did you guys grasp that? Well, I wasn't very graceful. I didn't accept it gracefully. I wasn't like, oh my goodness, thank you. I have a diagnosis. I, I don't know think what, any one of us would have, by the way. I think we all would have been like, okay, what in the world's going on here? Right. Yeah. I, I was not happy. I was like, give me cancer. Give me a kidney oh. disease. Give me something. Don't give me a mental illness. Wow. Because... Mental mm. illness has such a stigma. Mental illness has um, so many things that go with it, whereas you can explain cancer. Somebody doesn't feel well, oh, they have cancer. I don't feel well. I can't function. She has a mental illness. They're not as easy to... They're not easy to, to come to grips with. Right. I mean, and I think in our own minds, and I also think in the people, especially when you're in a fishbowl, you know, here we are in Pastor's Appreciation Month, and sometimes in ministry, you don't feel appreciated. Let's just, let's just be honest <laughs> about that. I mean, you know, been a pastor and a minister. So how did you deal with, reckon with, you're already living life in a fishbowl, and now you've got to tell not just your family, by the way, now as a church as large as, as Eastside is, you've got to let everyone else in also on right. this one. That was hard. Yeah. In fact, the first three years, I didn't say a word, and I didn't let my husband say anything. Tim was not allowed to tell anybody what was going on, and that was unfair. Was that tough? That, yes, that was yeah. tough. It was unfair. He needed support. He needed support on how to um, handle a wife with mental illness mm. and to manage the church and to see, you know. But being, being in the ministry that he was in, and um, Christians don't always accept mental illness as another, like a physical illness. Yeah. They see it as it's sin in your life. It is, um, it, you don't have enough faith. You're not praying enough. Get it together. Get it together. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I was like, I'm not, I can't deal with that. I can't deal with that right now. I need you to just be quiet. But he needed his own support, and that wasn't mm. fair to him. So three years later, I came out with a video and, and let everybody know I have mental illness. Was that tough coming up with that video going, hey, I'm letting, I'm letting everyone in? Because in church life, especially a church the size of Eastside, where Tim's on staff at, you know, people know your name before you know their name, right. basically. Right. And so was that tough? Um. Actually, by the time I had reached that place, Mana, I was, I had accepted, I have this. It, whether they understand it th to be an illness or not, mm. I still have it. I live with it. I know what it is. I feel like it is my, my job now to educate and to help others understand what that mental illness is in the church. Yeah. Christians do have mental illness. They do struggle. Mm. And God loves us through our journey like he does anybody else with any other physical illness. He sure does. I remember when I came out with ADHD, mm -hmm. I mean, when it was diagnosed. Now, my family would say they knew a long time ago, Diane, but I can remember it was a different form of mental illness. I remember thinking, oh, no, what are people going to think? Right. How did you get beyond that, Diane, and just saying, I don't really care what people think. I'm going to tell my truth. Does that make sense? Right. It yeah. does make sense. I had enough peer support mm. of my own network of peer support that my yeah. inner circle was very supportive. And they educated themselves. They went to the internet and they learned about bipolar disorder. They came to my doctor's visits. They... Um, so you let them in. You let I your let, own circle in. I let my circle in. Would you advise that to other people to I definitely let your advise. friends in? Let your friends in. Education is key yeah. to understand something. It's, it's scary when you don't understand it. Yeah. There's just so many unknowns. But when you understand what's going on and it makes sense and you can educate your friends and then they can educate those around you. Um, so... Once I came to the place of acceptance, just accepting that this yeah. is what I have, I was okay with being uh, what, a voice 
to be in a voice mm. for those with mental illness in the Christian community. Wow. Um, how did Tim, your husband, how did he minister to you throughout this, this journey? Oh, goodness. Um, he's just been, he's been by my side. Tim is not one to go out and do a bunch of research and figure out what's going on. Yeah. But he learned just what's experientially. Yeah. He learned about the illness through me. Huh. So it's been a tough, it's been a very tough challenge. Marriage is hard. And yeah. then you take a <laughs> mental illness and put it mm. in the mix and it exacerbates it. So what would you say to the church at large on how they can come alongside, especially a minister's wife, or come alongside just a regular church member, in fact, who's battling, going through either whether it's bipolar or whether it is any type of mental mental illness, what would you say to them? What's one or two things you would say of how they can come alongside? How they can come alongside? And help. Um, what you can do is really encourage them to get professional help. Because I yeah. think sometimes profession, seeking professional help means you don't need God. You And you do. Yeah. Allow God to give you the resources. The church, go to the church and they have... They have therapists and psychiatrists, and they have re references and recommendations of people that seek you can seek. Seek out help, you would say. Seek, definitely seek help. Help them seek, seek out help. help. Yeah. You can't do it on your own. It's, it's not something you can do on your own. I have a whole treatment of, I have medications. I have mm. hospital stays. I have um, family support, professional support. It takes uh, the truth, um, the church, supporting me, they've come a long way. Wow. They have been a huge support to me the past few years as they come to understand that mental illness yeah. is not something to be afraid of. What did you discover once you started sharing your story, once you started speaking about it, and now you've written about it, and I would tell everyone to, to get your, your book, Journals from a Broken Mind. What did this do for, for you in the writing process? It was very therapeutic. Uh, it was a very healing journey for me. It was like, okay, I wanted something like this when I was diagnosed. I wanted mm. a story that I could connect to. And I would go to the internet and research bipolar, Christian, female, mother of three, whatever. And I just felt like the, me writing this was giving somebody else hope and somebody else, mm. um, something, educating them and letting them know you're not alone. You lay it all out in here. I mean, I'm very like, raw. There's not, I mean, there's nothing. I mean, literally, I'm going. Oh wow, she she went there. <laughs> um, <laughs> how did you go there? If that makes sense. Is that a fair question? I, to, I like, think yeah. yeah. That's funny <laughs> you ask because I don't know any other way. Hmm. I don't know anything but vulnerable and raw. That's what connects with me. Yeah. And so if you, if people, there's store, bits of, in my story that are like, yeah, she went there, but somebody's going to read it and go, I connect with that. Mm -hmm. I can relate to that. So I'm willing to put my story out there to, um, for that one person that may be able to connect to that piece of my story. Wow. And now you can say in front of the whole world, I have this mental illness. Yes. I have a book. And you have a book to back it up, too, <laughs> Diane. Um, last, next last question, which I, I got to ask this, this question. Who are, who are the people that came alongside you and walked you through this journey? And what did that mean to you? Okay. Tim, my husband. Yeah. KB, my girlfriend from all the way, she goes all the way back to high school. Wow. And um, Lori, my friend that mm. got to know me six months after my diagnosis. And she saw me with the illness. Before that, my friend saw, oh, that's just Diane. When I would do the wild, bipolar, crazy, when I would do the crazy stuff, the energized, the, a lot of, um, mm. that, that was just Diane. But she knew me post-diagnosis, and she could separate the illness and say, you're in an episode. And so she was very... So you need those friends who are going to be up front with you to yes. go, here is what's going on. Yes. And yes. we need to take care of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, what are some don'ts that you would say to church people, especially people in the congregation, when they come to terms or find out that their minister's wife or pastor's wife is going through mental illness? What are some just that you would go, hey, you should not do this? Okay, I say, don't pity me. Don't mm. pity me because I don't need your pity. I need, I need prayers. We all do, just like we all do. Um, are you doing okay? Are you, you know? Which we tend to do in church life. Yeah, That's yeah. just kind because of, we think we're being nice about right. it. We're like, hey, is there anything? Else? Yes, we tend right. to do that. Right, yes. <laughs> Just treat me like you would treat anybody else. Mm. And if I'm struggling and you notice it, send me a text. Send me a, an email. Send me a, a note. So, so don't avoid it. Don't avoid it. Yeah. No. It's there. It's reality. This, yeah. is, this is part of my life. It's part of my journey and my struggle. Don't be afraid of it. I'm not, I'm not going to attack you. You're not going to fall not, apart. If I'm not going to fall yeah. apart. No. And I think we think we're, we're not, we, I think we're thinking we're being mean or negative as church people when we negative. take that stand back. That's and a very really, good point. And really, you're saying take the stand in. Yes. Yeah, yes. I agree. All right, last question, and I'm so thankful for our time together. When you hit send on this, when it was all said and done, when you were like, you've gone through all your journals, you've put them as best as you can in this 45,000 word, beautiful essay book here, I would say, what did you think? Um, it was surreal. It's like, did I really do this? Mm. And I still, it, it launches in just a, a less than a month. And I still am like, um, We're about am to I going to do, yeah, yeah, I'm about to reveal my life story to the world. Yeah. I'm about to reveal my life story to the world. Am I ready for that? Am mm. I ready for that? Because, you know, every book has its supporters and its haters. And I'm not ready for the haters. Yeah, I, I don't see how anyone could hate this book, first <laughs> of all. I think it's very in-depth and very helpful. And I got to tell you, as your friend and someone who's asking you the questions at the same time, thank you for being courageous. This was good. Thank you, Mina. I appreciate it. Thanks.